When I was a freshman in high school, I lived in the same dorm room with Xiaoyu, Ajiuan, and Lily. We met for the first time on the day the dormitory opened for move-in. I remember almost arriving at the dorm room door at the same time as Ajiuan. But Ajiuan insisted that I go in first. I smiled and thanked her before going in. To our surprise, when I stepped into the room, Xiaoyu had already settled in several steps ahead of us. Not only had she positioned her own things, but she was also lying on the bed resting. She heard us come in and greeted us happily as she sat up. Ajiuan and I responded to her greetings, but when we compared beds, we found that Xiaoyu was lying on my bed. I chuckled at this, and at that moment, Ajiuan went to put her things in her own locker. But she found that there were already things placed inside. It was then that Xiaoyu realized she had put her belongings in Ajiuan's locker. This made me laugh even more. Xiaoyu quickly got up, apologized to Ajiuan, and started packing her things. She even asked US which locker was hers, while Ajiuan, in her gentle and considerate way, kept reassuring her that it was okay. We all helped Xiaoyu move her things back to her own locker and bed, laughing about the incident as we did. Xiaoyu is a lively and cheerful person who always brings laughter and humor. She even led the teasing about this incident. And this unexpected little incident set the tone for a joyful and relaxed atmosphere from the very first day of living together. The next morning, Lily came to the dormitory with her parents. After seeing each other, we all greeted each other and helped her tidy up her bed. Lily is a bit shy and speaks softly, but seeing her gradually relax from her initial nervousness, her parents left reassured. Soon, we all became good friends and built a strong bond with each other. During this time, we had many unforgettable experiences and memories. At the end of the semester when we were about to enter sophomore year, the dormitory we originally lived in was scheduled for renovation to accommodate new students. The school arranged for us to move to the dormitory where the senior sisters used to live next door. So, before the summer vacation, we packed up our dormitory belongings and cleaned everything. The school also said that we could decide who to room with when we returned. Without hesitation, we chose each other. Before the start of sophomore year, the dormitory opened a few days early for students to move in and organize their rooms. On the first day, we cleaned the inside and outside of the dormitory. Lily didn't arrive at the dormitory until almost noon. When she walked in and saw the condition of the dormitory, she was first surprised and then reproached us for not waiting for her to clean together. To make up for her not participating in the cleaning, Lily decided to treat us to lunch at noon. Amidst our joy, Ajiuan told Lily that when we were cleaning earlier, we found a mirror inside the door of her locker, large enough to reflect her entire upper body, making it convenient for her to check her appearance before going out. We didn't know why there was a mirror in Lily's locker that hadn't been removed, but we all felt she was lucky, and we looked at her with envy. At this point, Lily shyly said that although the mirror was in her locker, everyone could use it together. So, before going out, we would take turns looking in the mirror. This made our dormitory a tourist attraction. However, this peaceful and happy life began to change one night. Before going to bed, we would lie in our beds and talk about interesting things, reminiscing about funny moments, filling the dormitory with laughter. It was our daily ritual. That night, we talked about Xiaoyu's embarrassing moment in freshman year, and laughter echoed in the dormitory. I thought we were probably the noisiest ones in the hallway. But we found that Lily was the first one not to react. Instead, there was only the sound of calm breathing. Later, we all fell asleep one after another. That night, I suddenly felt the urge to urinate in my sleep. When I opened my eyes, I saw Lily standing in front of her locker quietly combing her hair in the dim light from the street lamp outside. I was scared half to death by this scene, thinking it was some kind of ghost. But after confirming it was Lily, I breathed a sigh of relief, put on my slippers, and turned on the night light. As I passed by her, I told her in a tired voice, Lily, you scared me.
but she seemed not to hear me and continued to stand in front of the mirror, combing her hair. At that moment, I thought maybe she was just like me, getting up to go to the bathroom but had already returned to the dormitory. So, I hurried to the bathroom because of the urgency. When I came back, I saw Lily still standing in front of her locker, slowly and eerily repeating the motion of combing her hair. At that moment, I didn't think too much about it and just went to ask her why she wasn't sleeping and still combing her hair. When I approached her, I noticed the vacant look in Lily's eyes as she stared at herself in the mirror. At this point, I started to feel anxious because I didn't know what was going on with her. Suddenly, I thought, could she be sleepwalking? Some say you shouldn't wake up someone who is sleepwalking. So, I became cautious and lay back in bed, letting her continue to stand there and comb her hair on her own. But I was really nervous and worried inside. I lay in bed watching her, secretly hoping she would hurry back to bed and sleep. But I don't know when I opened my eyes again and saw the sunlight streaming into the room through the window. I knew it was already morning, so I quickly got up to check on Lily. Fortunately, I saw her sleeping on the bed, but her locker was still open at the same angle as yesterday. I deliberately left it as it was and went to wash up and use the bathroom first. Maybe they were all awakened by the noise of me opening the locker because when I returned to the dormitory, they were all awake. As I approached, I observed the mirror in Lily's locker, but there was nothing strange about it. However, I noticed that the comb was missing. When I asked Lily about it, she found the comb on her bed. I deliberately asked her about the locker, did you forget to close the locker after combing your hair yesterday? She said she had closed the locker tightly before going to bed but didn't know how the comb ended up on her bed. I also asked Ajuan and Xiaoyu, and they said no one had opened it. At this point, I saw Lily sitting on the bed, pondering these questions anxiously because she was really scared of ghosts. Even some funny ghost stories she didn't want to hear. To reassure her, I quickly smiled and said to her, actually, I'm the one who opened it. At that moment, Lily was angry and laughed at me again. So it seems that Lily has no idea what happened last night. I kept this in mind and would pay attention to Lily's behavior whenever I woke up in the middle of the night. But nothing similar happened again later. About two months later, I woke up again in the middle of the night and saw Lily standing in front of the mirror combing her hair. Because Ajuan and I slept head to head, I could reach her with my hand. After lying on my side, I reached out and patted Ajuan's shoulder, trying to wake her up. When Ajuan woke up and looked at me, I gestured for her to quietly look at Lily. As a result, Ajuan sat up in shock. We both watched Lily repeat the same motion slowly and eerily. We didn't know what to do for a while. After a while, I heard Ajuan sobbing, and she began to feel scared too, worrying about what might be wrong with Lily. So I got out of bed and went to wake up Xiaoyu. Lily didn't react to anyone and continued to stare blankly at herself in the mirror, focusing on combing her hair. When Xiaoyu woke up and saw this eerie scene, she was shocked too. Almost without thinking, she went over and tried to wake Lily up. Xiaoyu called Lily's name and grabbed her right hand holding the comb to make her stop. At this point, Lily turned her head to look at Xiaoyu, showing a strange expression that didn't belong to her. But the next moment, Lily suddenly reacted and woke up, looking confused at all of us. She didn't understand why we were there. We had her sit on the bed and began to explain what had happened, describing her eerie behavior of combing her hair in front of the mirror in the middle of the night. Lily's face gradually became terrified as she completely didn't remember doing such a thing. She couldn't understand why she would behave so abnormally in the middle of the night. After discussing it, we decided to get rid of the mirror in the dormitory, hoping to get rid of the eerie source. So, before we went home for the weekend, we went to the dorm supervisor auntie to make this request. We hoped that when we came back on Sunday, the school would have the mirror taken care of. But she hesitated and said. Why do you want to throw it away? Because it is a school asset, it cannot be replaced or discarded casually as long as it is functioning normally. 
We were disappointed to hear this because what we encountered would definitely not be considered a valid reason. When we returned to the dormitory, we comforted each other and then packed up our luggage and went home separately. When I got home, I told my grandma and my mom about this incident. My mom first said that it might be because your roommate is under too much pressure. Then my grandma said if you feel uncomfortable, ask your mom to prepare a dark cloth for you. When you return to the dormitory, cover the mirror with the cloth. When I returned to the dormitory that day, my mom gave me a piece of cloth and eight talismans. She asked us to wear one each on our bodies and put one under each pillow. Students should study hard, sleep well, and not think too much. So, I followed what my grandma and mom said. At first, we all had doubts and wondered if it would work. But since the mirror was covered with cloth and we all wore talismans, the dormitory gradually returned to its former calmness. Lily no longer exhibited such eerie behavior. But whenever she combed her hair, she still had the urge to lift the cloth covering the mirror. The dormitory became peaceful again after that.